Hello everyone, hope everyone is doing well. We are starting the very first video of our data processing fundamentals with live Python code series. And in this video, our topic is data access and filtering. We will start with setting up our Python 3.10 environment with the PyCharm ID and set up our main.py as a starting point. Next, we are going to import the modules which we have talked about, pandas as well as the Seaborn, and load the datasets as available within the Seaborn library. Next, we are going to learn how to get the rows from our data set depending on what kind of limits we are going to put while reading the data set. Next, we are going to look around the column values and the data types which are available in the given columns. As we progress, we are going to learn how to filter the column values based on numeric data is available in the given data sets. And that's where we are going to stop our very first part of this data processing fundamentals video and which I will carry on in the subsequently available videos. So let's get ourselves coding. So I have PyCharm open and a very simple application main.py is ready to go. I do have Python 3.10 configuration in my machine and the terminal I have opened where we could say that I have Python 3.10. Let's set up a breakpoint here and run this code. So we make sure that our breakpoints are hit and when we run our application, we could see that print message is printed at our console. So the environment is set for us to complete our work. So our objective is first to select at least one data set. So we will write a function here, define get data set, and we are going to pass what particular data set we are looking for. Let's run the Python. We are importing the Seaborn as SNS. The Seaborn library already has a collection of several data sets which can be used. SNS dot load data set and I can say I am interested in this data set diamonds. This is the diamond data set with about 53,000 rows and 10 columns. If I'm interested in Titanic, 891 rows. So you can see that this library is going to be very good for us to use a sample data set. So we are going to say that whatever data set we want. So here will be data set, name will be a parameter. Whatever the data set is going to be selected is going to be read from the SNS library. So I will create a new file called dataset dot pi. This dataset dot pi will have the import seaborn as sns and then here we can create a function call from sns and here will be our ds name which is a dataset name and here we will check if this ds name is not none it means we can get the dataset so sns dot load dataset and we will be using our data set name here and the value which will be a data frame and the return of this method will be data frame. Now if you see here that if we are making a gradation like this we need to make sure we need to initialize our df variable here. So we could say df is equal to we need to set up a data frame. In order to use the data frame we need the library pandas. So we can say import pandas as pd and we will set up an empty data frame. So now we have df which is an empty data frame and if this name is not none then load data set based on a given name will be loaded and that data set detail will be stored in this df data frame object and this data frame object will be returned here. And we can import this method into the main.py from data set import the function name. So this is the function we have implemented here. Get data set. Here we are going to pass the data set name and it will have our df here 
perfect and we are going to call this data set here and we will for example we will put a name here so we can say diamonds so it means we are making a call get data set diamonds request is going to be passed from here to our data set if the data set is comes back then we are going to get the result and the result will be stored here so we can look into df and we can say print df and the result of our data frame will be printed here there are few issues but let's at least run this code so what we are going to do is that we are going to run this code first the data frame is printed here and that's the data frame all the rows and 10 columns that's what is being printed and we can put a breakpoint here we can run the debugger we can check the df has the whole data frame as you could see here total number of rows and columns and that data frame is in memory as soon as we jump to the breakpoint and finally the results are listed here if we would want to change this code and rather than printing the data frame and want to print this data frame as json we can also print that data frame as json df dot two and you see there is a json and within the json we have some options available how we would want to print it and if you see here there is an option called the orientation of the record if we run this code and because we haven't set the orientation so this data set is being printed in not really good way so we can actually set the orientation properly here orientation records now run this code you will see that our data set is really printed much better way because now we know that what a particular actually this is a one full record from here to here our orientation is to print as record so all the fields are printed properly so we are going to use this way output printing next as you see here the very first problem we are seeing is that there is a large amount of data so it's better that we could actually set up that how many records we really want to print correct so where we are reading this data set we can actually also set up a limit here so we can say records limit and records limit is what is going to be sent from this method here so we could say that our record limit is going to be passed here and we can say record limit we just need to print 10 records now we need to get these 10 records then we need to understand that how we would want to get these records let's come back to terminal df equals this data frame has all the records related to diamonds data set we can actually get the head 10 it's going to give the record from top 10 records if we say df tail it is going to give the 10 records from the bottom and if you say df sample it will take 10 records from anywhere in in this so we are going to write a method here which will give us the record limits the way we we want whether we want from top we want from bottom we just want to sample so we are going to write a new method called define get records by type so we need records limit how many you want let's use limit type so we know that limit types are so limit types are either you have top you have bottom or you have sample so what we are going to do we are going to call after this data set is loaded we are going to look into the record limit here so it means we are going to call this method from here this method is going to be called it will pass the record limit we also need to pass the limit type and the result of this method is going to have the updated data frame which will have the limited records it means we need to pass the data frame here so this data frame which we have currently selected is going to be passed here so this data frame is passed here and record limit is passed also and thus result is going to be processed so we are using data frame and return of this method will also be data frame now we also need to pass the limit type it means from here we also need to select a limit type so we can say the limit type is top for example so data set we need to have the limit type and this is the limit type is going to be passed 
So in the main function, we are selecting the data set, how many records we want, how, what's the limit we need. And this limit is going to be passed here. And we are going to pass this data frame, which is here. And then limits with limit type is going to be managed here. Next, we are going to select if because we need to check whatever the conditions are. So we can say if limit type is equal to top 10 df equals to df dot top and our record limits. Else if limit is bottom, then we need to pass this as the tail. And finally, if it is sample, let's sample it. One thing we wanted to make sure that what if somebody put a wrong limit, which is not part of any of, of our equation, in that scenario, we can validate it. We can say if this given, if given limit type in this, then only we are going to perform the any of this operation, top, bottom, whatever we would want to check here. So we have added this method. So if you would want to see the result as a JSON, we can print result as a JSON or we can print result as a data frame. So we have two options here to print result type equals df. If result type is df, we need to print like this else print like this. So right now we just want to print our result as a data frame so we can actually check the results. So before we run the code, let's make a quick check. Top, tail, oh, there is no top, there is head. So we have head, tail, and sample, sample. So that should be okay. So let's run it. Very good. So you could see there is 10 records are coming. That's from top. Let's go from bottom. We are getting record from bottom because that's the index. If we select the sample, and you could see that these like random records from overall 55,000 records. So at this point, we have completed the method where we could read the data set, limit the data set, and we can also limit how we would want to read our records limit. In the next step, we really want to know that how many columns are there and what these columns are and what the column type is. So let's write a new method called get columns. And this method is going to return the list of columns. Let's come back to our terminal. If you do not know the columns, you can get df columns. And here is the list of columns. And here you could see that this is the result, which is giving you the column what is the type of this df columns and if you would want to know the type of this it's actually the type of panda score indexes base index so if you would want to take this re result and you need to convert it you need to actually say can you return it as a list and this is the list is going to be telling you all the column names in a list format it means and we need to use this in our code it means we need a data frame. So we will get a data frame here. Column list is what we are going to pass. Here we are getting the data frame. So here we can make a call to get the column list. It means we need to make this method and available for us here. So we are importing that method too. So we can say columns equals we need to say get columns and we need to pass the data frame and here will be our column list so we can say column list and column list is going to be dot format and here will be all columns let's run this code here you could say this is the column list is being printed after that our data frame is printed now we need to know what types of our columns are so let's take this same method and we can work on it so we will call this method call get column data types so let's use that column data types and let's come back to terminal and see how we can get the columns and if we would want the co column types we know the method called d types so df dot d types is what gives us the column types column name column type column name column type that's how you are going to get. If we would want to convert that to list, we can say, let's convert this to list as well. 
and that gives us a list of each column and what it is types. If you would want to print df dot dtypes dot to list, you can also take this whole list and you can convert as a string and print it here. So we are going to use the same method. The only difference here is dtype dot list column types list and that's what our result. We can take this method. We can also import from data set and we can column data types. At this point, let's run this code. Column list, column data types list and here is the column data types list. In the next step, we are going to create a method so that we could filter the data set by its value. So we are going to create a new method called get data set by value. And here definitely we need a data frame and this data frame will be processed in this method and return will be also the data frame. So first thing we need to know that on which field you would want to filter. So you need to provide the field name. You also need to provide the value and you also need to provide the comparison like the operator. So we need field name, field value, operator or the condition. Which condition you would want to run the comparison. So let's look into our terminal. So we have df. Here as you could see that we have various numeric data in a specific field. So for example, let's take a look into the caret. So df caret is the field which has all the caret related data. So if we would want to well want a value where we would want to check the caret value. So for example, caret value is 0.023 all the way to 0.75. So if you would want to create a condition where the df caret value is greater than 0 0.50, for example, if that is the condition, we need to write a data frame. So we could say, let's write a data frame df where the df caret is greater than 0.50 all the records we are getting here, they are over dot 50. If we can get the length of this data frame, we will see that the records are about 35,000 when we say 50. If we will reduce it to under 18,000 data frames, which have the caret value under dot 50. If you would want to use the table or price, you can also use a particular number and you can validate that value based on this formula. You can actually save this value in a data frame or you can also select something called the df dot location. So we can say df dot location and you can select your data frame and here will be field as caret then less than or equal to zero 0.50 and less here. So here we have a data frame which has all these records which have the value based on our condition. So we are going to use this method which is going to process the re result for our get data set by value. And this will be our data frame. Now we need to understand how we need to pass these parameters. Here we need the field name so field name will be this field value field value will be this and the condition is going to be apply here so first we need to make sure that the field name which somebody is asking is part of given fields or not so we need to validate the field so we will say command validate field name second we need to validate that field name is numeric so we need to validate field value. Finally, we also need to check the condition because condition people can write anything when it's really being asked by the users. So we will validate the condition. And once the all validations are correct, then we are going to process our results. So we have already wrote a function called the get columns. So get columns can be used here. So we can say all columns equals to get columns and we are going to pass our data frame. And we can say if the field name in all columns, it means the field validation is true. So field validation is true. It means before the field validation is false. So we have validated that this field 
is part of all the fields which we already have checked earlier now field value so let's call the field value validation is false to start with and let me come here and show you we have value 10 here if you would want to know what is the value type 10 look like you can say type 10 it is integer if you say 10.0 it's became a float even if you say negative it's a float and if you use it's integer so you are getting idea that value is either integer or value is integer float or value is either float so we have to validate that field value must be either integer or must be float what if you say type a string that's became a string so we need to make sure that field value which is being passed is must be part of integer or float so you see that result of type of whatever value we are passing is coming as a tuple so we need to fix it and we need to get the string value out of it dot underscore name two time underscore and that gives you the actual value so this is how we are going to use the correct way to get the string value of our value type so here we are going to use the type of field value so this is our field value type then we need to make sure if the field value type in whether it's integer or whether it's float it is very much possible that you might find some condition where it is an integer 64 or where it is a float 64 so we have also added that condition so if field value is either any of these we will make sure that our field value validation is also true so we have validate our field value next we need to validate the field condition so let's look into the correct conditions are we are looking for equal value so we will say what if they give me the list of all values which are equal lower so we can say people can write lower you can also ask for upper sometimes people can also write as the operators or it could be greater than equal to could be lower than equal to so we have this correct condition which can be sent by the application so now we can look into if the conditions in correct condition if this is then we can say field operator validation is false and if it is validation is true so these are the three validation we have added here so let's so this is the field name validation let me make it field name validation now you can say if field name validation is true field value validation is true and field operator validation is true then we are going to process it now depending on field operator validation if field operator in if it is equal or this then the condition is going to be this correct else if the operator is for example lower it means lower than or equal to then it will be this or if the operator is upper then it's going to be so now we have added all three conditions as it supports right now at this point our method is written based on value so let's take a look and we can use the same example so we will pass our caret as a field value 0.50 and operator will be upper here we are selecting the 1000 record so after we check the condition let's take a look into so field condition oh so here df field name so we need to make sure that this variable is correct this and here as well as here so i think those checks are correct at this point we can put a breakpoint here now the method is pretty much set here so we have set breakpoint here so we have breakpoint here here and here so we need this method to be called here so let's import it first calling it and we are passing our data frame then we need the field name so field name will be carrot is going to be 0 0.50 and our operator is we need upper because we already have set up the breakpoint here so we now let's debug run here so field name condition is true value condition is true operator validation is true at this point the df is 1000 record after this condition filter 
10,000. Let's make it 0.3 and lower. The output here is 677 rows after we have processed first time. So out of 1000 and if we would run 0 0.03 and lower, let's put a breakpoint here, remove the breakpoints here so we could get much faster results. So before we are getting 1000 records and after this condition is 70 records as you could see here. It means our method is working. Let's run this code. There are 70 records. We have checked the carrot here. Let's look into the color clarity. Use the clarity and use a value above dot 60, 65 upper. Let's run. So we have made a mistake here. The clarity is actually the categorical value. It is not the value as numeric. And that's a very good test because if that is the case, what we could do, we could actually add one more validation here and we can say field type value. So we have set up the value validation. We can also do the field type validation. So validate field type. So now let's understand field type. So if you are looking into a field, so we have data frame and the field is carrot. That's the field. Its D type is float. If you look into the clarity, its D type is categorical and these are the categories available here. If you look into the field price, the type is integer. So you have seen various types of field types. So we need to make sure that whenever somebody is asking the get data set by value, the selected field must be either float or integer. So let's write that validation field type validation is false. Now we need to get the field type here. So DF, if we say DF, DF types, you are getting the field name. So we are select, going to select any of these methods. Don't really need this field type is equal to DF of the selected field name. So this is the field name dot D types. And if this field type is in our target field type, so if you look into this is our selected field type to in float in 64. So what we could do, we can create a variable called validated field valid field data types are these and select this and use as a variable. Same thing Then field data type should be true as well. Now we can take this and we can also add so we have four ends conditions here and if that condition is matches that's going to be work. Now we are going to see if we are going to get the exception here or not because this time we should not get the exception. So let's run this code. Just come inside here. The field type is category here. So it means that this field type will not be in this condition and it will come out. So field type validation is false. Because of that, none of this code is going to run. And you will see here that our validation did run and we did not hit the error. So it was a good experience for us to write a code which does not have the exception. Now we can use this value and use depth. We can go back to terminal df 1k equals df dot head 1000. So we have top 1k records here and now we can actually do the same test here if we use depth is greater than 65. If the depth is greater than 65, how many values is going to be 894. We can change to 65 depth. We can say let's use the top out of 1000. Let's run this code now. Before we are printing this data frame, we can actually print the length. Here we could use print data frame records of length of our DF. So that's going to print the data frame length. Here is the depth 65 and so we just want every record 65 and above. And we can see that this record shows that everything is 65 and above or 69. 68. Let's run this code. So there is only three records 
and they are 68 and above. It means that our filter is working. If you would want a carrot where the value is 1 or above, so we are going to take a stop here and I will continue the same code, same ID and same flow in the second part of our data processing fundamentals with live Python code series. I do appreciate your time in this very first video and I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next second video related to this series. Until then, thank you so much.